All right, so uh, just going to follow up on uh, the work that uh, David Smith was showing. Um, so this is the uh, our original proof of concept and application here. Um, so what this is is a 3D topology uh, based on WebGL using 3JS, uh, and there's also support for uh, virtual reality using WebVR. So the idea was to take our existing topology data and then transport it over here and then visualize it in 3D. So uh, what we have here is just a layout of um, different networking equipment that we have at the office. Um, and then what you see there are the actual links between the different uh, interfaces, right? So this basically tells us that, you know, on this NUC, we got that ethernet port connected to port three on that LAN switch. Uh, what you see here is the actual the throughput on that link as last pulled by uh, Collecti. And then we actually have an an this animation here uh, that will actually accelerate based on the link usage, right? So if the link usage was full, we'd see like these balls going a lot quicker, whereas now, you know, there's next to nothing on there. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty light. Um, and then, yeah, you can kind of navigate and then go around it and see it here. Um, and then one cool thing that we've been working on as well is adding the support to uh, be able to visualize uh, alarms on here too. So uh, the alarms aren't actually coming in here, so we can just kind of simulate or throw some on there. Um, so let's go ahead and just add two alarms for every vertex, right? You see the kind of graph shape up uh, and the alarms kind of float up on another level up top of that. Uh, the idea would be to leverage the work that uh, David was showing, right? Streaming the alarms in real time and be able to show them on the different objects as they come in. Um, so that's there. We can increase the count, you know, and then have a whole bunch. And we see, you know, they're laid out uh, based on. <laughs> so there's somebody else. Is, somebody else is in here right now, checking the same application because we see that little cursor moving. So yeah, there's actually a couple people <laughs> moving around. So this URL is actually open to the public. So if you guys join in, we can kind of see uh, see where everybody is. So that's pretty cool. And then you can click on them and follow. They're not necessarily seeing the same thing. They're just in the same space, right? Um, if they have, they're basically what everyone seeing, everyone else is seeing is this. So pretty cool. Um, okay, now we also added this concept in uh, 23 and 24, the notion of situations, right? So. Started the alarms and killed them. Like maybe, yeah. <laughs> they went away. <laughs> no, I think they bumped them up. They bumped them up. Oh, it's still there. I'm still hiding there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see where they're pointing. So remember that those numbers that uh, David was showing, right? Uh, that's X, Y, Z, and then the other one is uh, the kind of rotation or orientation wherever they're looking. Um, so right, we also have the notion of situations, which uh, combine various alarms together. Um, so we can show off that here. So if we can say, hey, there's one situation that combines all the alarms, right? Uh, and if there were many, so it would go, it would look something like that. So let's just try to stress this thing here. Let's go 64 alarms per vertice, and then uh, have, split that up among eight different situations, right? That's what it would look like. All right, and then we see the link is just kind of stretched. Everything's still stabilizing, All right? But uh, it's pretty cool. So imagine a large network, right? Uh, now you're able to see uh, performance data, fault data, link data, correlated situations, everything real time and in context uh, in this 3D view. And also collaborative, since you can hop in there and look at it with other people too. Um, so that's uh, most of what is here. Uh, there's this panel here on the right that shows a bit metadata about uh, what's being seen here. And then we've also played with uh, uh, some kind of visualizations, right? Be able to put this up on a screen and just let it, you know, kind of spin there and show, <laughs> show the network <laughs> and then change, you know, kind of as it, as it goes. So it could be there spinning and still, uh, still see. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. They're still experimenting, uh, you know, controls, being able to figure out what you show in context, um, and and so on. So, but just really playing around with uh, the different technologies. Um, so let's go ahead and just stop that and reset this here. Um, yeah. So if anyone's interested, uh, we also 
Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you do this in web VR. So you can actually connect a uh, headset. We've tested with the Oculus Go. You go to this URL, you're going to see a button show up on the left uh, called VR. And if you click on that in the browser, you'll actually be uh, dropped into the same view here and be able to kind of fly around and see others. So uh, if anyone here is interested in trying it out, we have a couple of headsets you can hop in and, uh, and go around. So uh, that's just kind of the stuff that uh, we've been playing around with. Any questions? Any thought or consideration around making this very geographic one day? Yeah, that would be really neat. Yeah. Like yeah. Real world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having their positions tied to actual locations rather than just kind of laid out. Yeah. That, that would be neat. <laughs> yeah, as well. um, yeah, so we can throw it, we can show a whole wealth of information in a very small display, and even people that don't understand networking can kind of get it, right? Compare this to a table of alarms, it's a lot more exciting to, to look at. Um, some of the challenges that we have is kind of usability and interaction, um, particularly in the VR mode, right, where your input is fairly fixed. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing as I'm doing this, go figure. Um, so yeah, your controls are fairly limited, right? You just can basically point. So how do you navigate this? How do you search, right? How can you take any actions? How would you acknowledge an alarm? We thought it'd be really cool to be able to take a few alarms and create a situation Right, just kind of drag them over into a bucket or something and just like, yeah, just be there kind of. <laughs> the thing is, we like, I mean, we have all these tools, right? And so just the, the stuff that we can now do with it. So, yeah, anything else? PDF report? Yeah, I don't know how to create a PDF report of this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can schedule it, have it in your inbox every morning. Yeah. VDF, yeah. VRDF. Yeah. 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 There is there are performance issues, uh, particularly with web VR because it's not native code. Uh, doesn't seem to run as quickly. So the amount of stuff you can show is fairly uh, limited. So it works well with small models. Um, if you want to show bigger models, I think we'd have to rewrite as a native application um, and be able to do more there. But yeah, there are performance issues. For sure. Some in the background and only see, yeah, all right, that'd be another way. Well, yeah, it's, uh, um, so that, that was my dev jam project. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>